السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الرحمن الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله وعلى آله وأصحابه أجمعين We praise Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala We send blessings and salutations upon Muhammad صلى الله عليه وسلم his entire household, all his companions, we ask Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to bless every single one of them and to bless every single one of us as well. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala write our names from among those who are granted freedom from the hellfire. Ameen. My brothers and sisters, it's important for us to know that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants us to be grateful for the favors that he has bestowed upon us. Gratitude is not only by saying, Oh Allah, I thank you, although that is one of the ways of thanking Allah. To say, Lakalhamdu wa laka shukru, ya wajidu jalla jalaluk. To say, For you is all praise and for you is all thanks, O oh Allah. That is indeed a way of praising Allah. But for a person to show true gratitude, he or she would need to adopt the commands of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. He or she would need to find himself or herself dressing appropriately, fulfilling salah, abandoning that which would displease Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, looking forward to worshipping Allah. That is true gratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. When a person wants to commit a sin, but he protects himself from it because he is grateful that Allah gave him eyes, Allah gave him a nose, Allah gave him hair, Allah gave him so much more. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestowed him with so many gifts. Then that is the person who would actually be achieving the pleasure of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, Surah Ibrahim, verse number seven, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, وَإِذْ تَأَذَّنَ رَبُّكُمْ لَإِن شَكَرْتُمْ لَأَزِيدَنَّكُمْ and indeed it is a declaration from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala to you that if you are thankful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will grant you increase. He'll give you more. He owns everything. When you are grateful, when you show gratitude, He will give you more. Subhanallah. Imagine a beggar begging from you and you only have one cent. I'm talking of here in South Africa and you open your window and you give one cent to the beggar. What did it displace of your wealth? Nothing. And the beggar is so thankful, so happy. I really thank you. I appreciate it. I really, I pray for you. God bless you. Whatever else the, the, the beggar says, what will happen to you? You'll say, hold on, hold on. Let me look for something else now, right? You'll take out the hundred grand bill from your pocket and you say, take it. Well, nowadays, if the beggars are sharp, they'll say, I knew how to get that hundred, didn't I? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's ownership is such that even the amount one cent displaces from our wealth, if Allah had to give entire creation whatever it asked for, it would not displace even that amount from his kingdom. That's how much he owns. That's what he owns. Subhanallah. So to show Allah thanks for whatever you have, even if it is a little, remember the only way of increasing the goodness Allah has given you, he says through shukr, through gratitude, through gratefulness. And I've already explained what it is. But the second part of the verse is very scary. He says, whoever is ungrateful, let them know that my punishment is severe. Allahu Akbar. What is ingratitude? Ingratitude in two or three different ways. One of them is when you find yourself, Allah has blessed you in so many ways, but you still want to displease Allah. You still want to go and do that which will earn the anger of Allah that shows that even what you have, you don't deserve it. Imagine a person, you give them a hundred grand bill and they throw it back at you and they tell you no way. They rip it in front of you. What will you do? You'll never give them again. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. These are small silly examples that have come to my mind right now. But the idea, I'm sure we understand what is being said here. Show gratitude to Allah. Stay away from sin. Because if you show ingratitude, then definitely Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will not only take away what he gave you, and then you will regret. But on top of that, he may, subhanallah, subhanallah, he may decide, to punish you. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us. To punish us out of what? Out of the fact that we were not grateful for what he gave us. 
Subhanallah, no other sin. The sin was, I just wasn't grateful. Allah gave me food, I still went for haram. Allah gave me drink, Allah gave me security. Allah says, okay, if you don't want to be thankful, we will take it away. I usually give an example of, and this is another example I said off the cuff. Say the headscarf. If we don't cover our hair, I'm talking here of the women, and even the men, if we don't dress properly, like I've said, you know, the dress code is not only for women in Islam, it's also for the men. If we don't cover our hair, for example, where we are allowed to cover it in a country like this, beautiful, you have the freedom, alhamdulillah. There will come a time when perhaps that freedom will be taken away and they will prohibit it and ban it like they have done in some countries of the globe. Now, people will tell you, you know what, it's too late. No, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. May he strengthen us. May he make us from those who are grateful. The fact that we can come to the masjid, we can identify ourselves as Muslimin. The fact that we enjoy the freedom. Allahu Akbar, make use of it, my brothers and sisters. If you don't, a day might come when that won't be there. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us all. What a beautiful lesson. Then a lot of us think sometimes, you know, some of the deeds that are done by the disbelievers, they are good deeds sometimes. They are very sometimes compassionate. Sometimes they reach out to people. They are truthful. Sometimes they are people who are innocent. They are hardworking, etc., etc. So people ask us, what will happen to them? What about their deeds? You know, the first, quest, the first question that is, what will happen to the kuffar who are good people? I would like to answer it by saying, my brother, my sister, on the day of judgment, we are taught that every one of us will be saying nafsi, nafsi, worried about himself. So stop worrying about everyone and everything else. Worry about yourself. Remember that, you know what? You need to pack away as many good deeds as you can before the day that those deeds won't help anymore unless they were done before you died. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. As for the kuffar who've done good deeds, Allah says quite clearly, I don't oppress anyone. I will give them the recompense of their deeds in this world. In such a way that because of their disbelief in the hereafter, we kept nothing for them there. Imagine you talk to someone and they don't believe in the hereafter. And then a friend says, but he's such a good man. You mean when he dies and then he's going to go to hellfire? Well, to be honest, he doesn't even believe that there is a hereafter. What are you worried about? Talk to him first about the hereafter. If he decides, okay, I want to believe in it. Now we can talk about how to save yourself from it. But what's the point of someone saying, you know what? Transfer the money into my bank account when he doesn't have an account. Allahu Akbar. He wants good deeds, but he's got no account to put those good deeds into. First, you've got to open your account by declaring your belief. And thereafter, you will be able to amass those good deeds. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. So my brothers and sisters, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, verse number 18 of Surah Ibrahim, The deeds of those who disbelieve are similar to the ashes that are strewn on a day of heavy, heavy wind where you find the ash. You know, ash is something the result of something that was burnt totally. You had your deeds, you did them. In return, Allah gave you good health. Allah gave you wealth. Allah gave you happy holidays in Hawaii and Honolulu. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave you kids who were probably gorgeous, absolutely good looking. You had a lovely home and every form of peace and serenity and stability. Those were your coupons, the good deeds you did in this world. Allah says, we gave you. What did we give you? Goodness in the world as well. You believed in the world, you worked for the world. We gave you the world. Those who work for the hereafter, those are the ones we will give the hereafter to. Do we understand now what is being said? So my brothers and sisters, this is Allah. He is reminding us, for us as believers, do not only work for this dunya. This world is only a small portion. Remember, the bulk of it is going to be needed after you close your eyes. Remember that, most of it. And I want to ask you a question. We all know people who've died, right? How long have they died for? Most of them longer than they were alive. Someone was alive for 70 years. They are now dead for the last 200 years. They've been dead. So what this means, common logic, we will be alive only for a short period of time. The rest of it will actually be while we're dead. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Still, man becomes deceived by the devil. This is why Allah says in verse number 22 of the same surah, the devil will come to you and make a promise. Yet he owns nothing. And Allah has made a promise and Allah owns everything. And on the day of judgment, the two of you are going to meet. Who? The devil is going to come. You're going to have an opportunity to talk to him. And the devil, you, the people who were led astray by the devil will tell the devil, hey, why did you lead us astray? The devil will say, hang on, 
I had no authority over you. I just made things look nice and beautiful and you fell for it. That's all. وَقَالَ الشَّيْطَانُ لَمَّا قُضِيَ الْأَمْرُ Shaitan will say, when everything is over, when the affair has been decided, you know what Shaitan will say? إِنَّ اللَّهَ وَعَدَكُمْ وَعْدَ الْحَقِّ وَوَعَدْتُكُمْ فَأَخْلَفْتُكُمْ Allah promised you a good promise. Allah made a promise to you. I made a promise, but I was actually cheating you. That's what he says. You fell for it. Subhanallah. And then he says, وَمَا كَانَ لِيَ عَلَيْكُمْ مِنْ سُلْطَانٍ إِلَّا إِلَّا أَنْ دَعَوْتُكُمْ فَاسْتَجَبْتُمْ لِي I had no authority over you except that I called you and you immediately responded without even a big effort from my, from on my side. You know, when shaitan wants you to commit sin for some strange reason, a person will spend hundreds of thousands of rands on the bottle, on drugs, gambling, adultery, girlfriend, everything else. He'll spend hundreds of thousands, but he will argue about the amount to be given as Sadaqatul Fitr on the day of Eid, whether it's 22 rands or 50 rands. That's the debate. Allahu Akbar. He will argue and it becomes such a big figure. But five minutes before that, he was on the phone with his girlfriend and he said, don't worry, I'll transfer to you. How much do you want? She says, well, 10 grand will be okay. I'll give you 20. It's fine. May Allah forgive us. The point I'm raising is haram. We're ready to spend on halal. That which is for the sake of Allah. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us. Remember, the minimum may be a certain amount which we cannot change because it is revealed by Allah and His Messenger when it comes to Sadaqatul Fitr. But that is not the ultimate amount in the sense that you can give more. It's better to give more. If someone says, look, the amount I owe is X, but I would like to give X plus Y plus Z. Is there any harm in that? No harm. Give. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bestow upon us his virtue. And may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us ease. Look at this devil. So save yourselves from the clutches of this devil by understanding his plot and his plan. He will come and beautify things. Go back to Allah. This is why sin is very easy to commit but wake up for salatul fajr wake up for salatul fajr come to the masjid sit in an islamic program stand up in taraweeh those 10 minutes that the imam takes more in salatul taraweeh they will seem like two hours but the two hours we spent outside the masjid smoking and laughing will seem like 10 minutes may allah forgive us Imagine why that was a waste of time. So shaitan just says, beautifies it and says, Hey, it's nice. It's cool. You know, you're sitting here Saturday, Saturday evening. Subhanallah. When I was in Trinidad, they call it liming. You know, they lime. And I was wondering what it means. But now I know, I know exactly what it means. They sit and just chill doing nothing. And that they'll enjoy. Call them for salah. Tell them to listen to the Quran. Tell them there is a tafsir program going on in the masjid. Come and sit. They will sit for five minutes and as though they are ants in their pants. They will want to get up and walk out. Allahu Akbar. Why is this? My brothers and sisters, that is what shaitan is talking about. Shaitan says, I did not have any authority over you. I beautified it a little bit. You fell for it. Now you're going to pay. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. This is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, when you are uh, thankful to me i will grant you increase but i want you to know in order to be grateful you will have to think what are the gifts i have bestowed upon you a lot of what allah gave you you won't realize until you sit and you ponder and he says when you do ponder you will never ever be able to reach the ultimate gifts of allah subhanahu wa ta'ala you won't count all of them how many are you going to count you're going to start today one day two days five days ten days you're going to start so many days counting every day a thousand things you still will not be able to complete the gifts of Allah. Even if you are to look only at your eyes, just your eyes, and you are to look at a million things that medicine will tell you regarding your eyes. You won't even be able to go beyond your eyes a year later. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us a deep understanding. Ask those who cannot see. Subhanallah. Imagine with your eyes and with our eyes, we don't have a little knob on the side where we need to focus and make sure we can see properly, etc, etc. Brother, you just come out, the thing adjusts on its own to the light, to the darkness, to whatever it is, etc, etc. Everything is done, planned by Allah, gift of Allah. If we were in prostration our entire lives to thank Allah only for the way the oxygen is filtered into our system, Wallahi, it would not be enough. Wallahi, it would not be enough. 
if you were to pay a million rands for one heartbeat and wallahi you were to save your life as a result of that you would result uh, you would understand that a million rands for one heartbeat is worth it is worth it imagine if you had to pay that for every heartbeat and you have 136000 hearts heartbeats a day what would you pay say you had to pay 1 cent per beat my brothers and sisters can you not read salah at least can you not fulfill the five daily prayers at least save yourselves allah gave you 136000 heartbeats every single day if one had to stop it would declare almost the end of you and yet you can't even get up for salatul fajr may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us may he guide us may he definitely keep us away from the clutch of the devil we think we are healthy but wallahi a split second you just need a doctor to tell you brother there's a tumor in your brain may allah safeguard us may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala cure all those who are sick and ill so verse number 34 allah says wa atakum min kulli ma allah has given you everything that you have asked him and if you are going to count the gifts of Allah, you will never ever be able to contain them. You won't be able to circumscribe them. You won't be able to jot them all down. Allah says, never. Indeed, man, man is not only oppressive and a wrongdoer, but he is filled with ingratitude. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us the exception. May we not be from among those who are ungrateful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us. Then we have another very interesting verse that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has revealed. This verse is informing us about how we should not become depressed when the oppressor according to us is not being dealt with it is allah who will deal with him and allah knows that he is letting him off for a certain period of time allah says allah is not oblivious of those who are oppressors when someone does wrong to you or when you do wrong to someone just because you are living mashallah healthy and happy does not mean that allah doesn't know what you've done he knows he's giving you a time to turn to repent and when the fixed time comes, he will get you. Allahu Akbar. Listen to what Allah says. Verse number 42, Surah Ibrahim. Don't think that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is oblivious of those who are oppressors of the deeds of those who are oppressing others don't think allah doesn't know what is happening across the globe don't think allah doesn't know who is wrong and who is right allah knows absolutely everything he says he gives respite to them for as long as he wishes up to a certain time when the eyes shall meet may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us all it's very interesting to talk about how others will be dealt with by allah but we forget that sometimes we are the wrongdoers we are the wrongdoers. We do wrong to our family members, to sometimes to our brothers and sisters, parents, children, whoever else it may be. Allah says, don't worry. We know what you're doing. We have you in our control. We know. Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala safeguard us. And this is why Allah says, those who see the punishment on the day of judgment, they will say, oh, our Rabb, oh, our Rabb, why don't you send us back so that we can do good deeds once again? Now we've seen. Allah says, what was the point? No point. You know, Iman means to believe. Believing in the unseen. If you've seen it, what's the point? Allahu Akbar. If you have seen something, you don't want to call it Iman. Iman is belief. If you translate the word belief, it's connected to something within your heart. I believe you. Which means, I believe. For example, all of us here, subhanallah, when we listen to the Quran, we are absolutely convinced that it's the word of Allah revealed to Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam came down with it. Convinced. If I ask you, did you see Jibreel alayhi salatu wa sallam? You'll say no. But I believe that belief is more concrete than me looking at you right now. 
this could actually be more fake than subhanallah what we firmly believe regarding revelation may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala strengthen our iman may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala help us and may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless every one of us so allah says warn the people regarding a day that the punishment will come and then the oppressors or the wrongdoers will say Rabbana akhirna ila ajalin qareeb O oh, our Rabb, grant us respite Re Grant us respite to a short period of time To a short appointed time Meaning just give us a little bit more time O oh, Allah And Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says No, that is not what is going to happen When the fixed time comes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will punish may allah subhanahu wa ta'ala not do that to us brothers and sisters we move on to the next surah surah al hijr and in it there is something very interesting you know the term hafiz hafiz in our language refers to a person who has memorized the quran right or a hafiza in our terminology we say this one is a hafiz that means this person has memorized the quran but the word hafiza actually means to protect to safeguard that's what it means to safeguard. What have you safeguarded? Many people will say, well, they have safeguarded the Quran in their hearts. That's what they will say. They have protected the Quran by learning it such that you can take the book away, but they will be able to recite the words of the Quran. They will. So Allah is telling you something very interesting to let you look at it from a different angle. Listen to what he says. Verse number nine. We have revealed this Quran. The Quran here is referred to as a dhikr, the reminder. We have revealed this Quran and we will definitely protect it. That's what Allah says. We will make sure it remains intact. Okay. Now let's go back to what I was saying moments ago. If Allah promises you that He is going to protect the Quran, when you make an effort to memorize it, Allah will look after you because the Quran is in your heart. So if you want to save yourself from calamities in this world and the next, your best bet also is to memorize the Quran. When you are memorizing the Quran, you're moving, you have Allah's word inside you and you are moving around. There is a special care unit, VIP protection for you because you know what? You have the Quran in your heart. You are not just an ordinary person. So this is why Allah says, we will look after the Quran. If you have made an effort to memorize it, you automatically fall into this verse. Many people, when they read the verse, they think, oh, that means Allah is going to protect the Quran from any change, etc. Yes, that's true. But how? In so many different ways, including us memorizing it. It's a gift of Allah. No book, even the one you have written yourself, is memorizable by you. Allahu Akbar. Besides the Quran, everyone knows that. And this is why Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala tells us, I will protect it. My brothers and sisters, isn't this encouragement enough for us to make an effort to memorize the words of Allah? Start off somewhere. You know, people look and they look at you and they start saying, I'm old now. I'm old. If I was younger, maybe. My brothers and sisters, let me give you some motivation. The Sahaba radiallahu anhum, the bulk of them who memorized the Quran were beyond the age of 40. Do you know that? They were all old people. They were not young children. They were elderly, meaning old. They were not kids in their teenage. The majority of them were older than that. And they memorized the Quran, but there was dedication. They never gave up. They knew you want to do something, you will do it no matter how old you are. Brothers and sisters, one verse a day. Are we ready inshallah? One verse a day. We ready inshallah? May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala grant us that. I really hope we can follow that through. It's not so difficult. In fact, you can start off by memorizing the short surahs. You can start off by memorizing some of those surahs that you hear very often perhaps, and then make an effort just one verse a day. And I promise you something interesting that Allah tells us through the hadith of Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam. He says, al bin Indeed, every action or actions shall be judged by their underlying intentions. Every action will be judged by the intention. So if I had an intention of completing the whole Quran and I was dedicated and I actually started one verse at a time and I did not finish, I died before I completed it. What's the deed that will be written next to my name? 
a person who memorized the whole Quran. Why? Because that was my intention. I didn't manage to finish it. Subhanallah. You are walking towards the masjid. Suddenly you die. What happened? You will be written as one who has gone to the masjid because that was your intention. That is how Allah judges. That is the gift of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So this is why my brothers and sisters, if you dedicate yourself, you have every day a small portion, very small still for as long as there is consistency, you have saved yourself. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala have mercy on us so that we can achieve that. I mean, so my brothers and sisters, that was something really great that I'm sure we've learned here this evening. Also, something we need to know. Arrogance is hated by Allah, detested by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. I want to tell you something else. I'm going to word it slightly differently because I want to, I want us to look at it from a different angle. We all know the sin of the devil, Iblis, was that he did not prostrate. To whom? To Adam, right? Iblis refused to prostrate to Adam. As a result, he was cursed. He was, a, he was the one who was the devil, known as Shaitan. What made him refuse? His arrogance. He thought he was too big, etc. Iblis was asked to prostrate to Adam by Allah. He didn't. How many times was he asked? Once. How many sujood was it? One sajda, one prostration. Because he rejected one prostration, he was cursed forever and ever. Brothers and sisters, you know where I'm going. We have been instructed by Allah to prostrate, not to Adam, to him himself. How many of us don't? Think about it. My brothers and sisters, think about it. We always talk about Adam alayhi salam. We talk about the devil. We talk about Iblis. We talk about how Allah told him prostrate and he didn't. But where are you when Allah told you to prostrate? You are also not prostrating. What about that? You might argue and say, okay, I still believe. I ask Allah's forgiveness. I'm not arrogant, but come on. It's also lack of prostration and not to a creature of Allah, but to Allah himself. And you didn't. My brothers and sisters, let's change our ways. Prostrate for the sake of Allah. Fulfill your duty unto Allah five times a day. And I promise you, you will find yourself saved from the clutches of the devil. My brothers and sisters, it is a serious matter. The first thing you are going to be asked about when you close your eyes as you are leaving this earth is going to be your prayer from amongst the first things. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us on that day. We have shortcomings from today. Promise Allah, oh Allah, I will read at least my farad. I'm going to make sure I don't miss it. It's not difficult. Allah has given you 24 hours of the day. It will not take you more than 24 minutes to fulfill the farad five times a day. And then you expand on it. I'm not saying stop on that. You will expand, but this is the bare minimum. My brothers and sisters, every time you hear the verses of the Quran, such as the verse 30 and 31 of Surah Al-Hijr, where Allah makes mention of Iblis not prostrating. Think about how we also do not prostrate. Never look at that story without considering our own guilt. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala forgive us all. I'd like to end on that note, my brothers and sisters. Remember, Allah is most forgiving, most merciful. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is waiting. He's waiting for you. He's waiting for me. He's waiting for everyone to turn to him. Brothers and sisters, we are still alive. We are still breathing. There is a lot of hope. My brothers and sisters, let's turn to Allah. Give up our bad ways and habits. They won't get you anywhere. They only will cause depression, chaos, stress, split, disunity, everything of that nature, sickness and whatnot. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is telling us quite clearly that if you turn to me, you will find me most forgiving, most merciful. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us all. Wa sallallahu wa sallam wa baraka ala nabina Muhammad. Subhanallahi wa bihamdih. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdik. Nashhadu an la ilaha illa ant. Nastaghfiruka wa natubu ilayk.